Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mining and Mods. Today we're going to take a look at what's inside a standard 18650 lithium-ion battery. This one is a Samsung 25R, and let's dive right in. On the outside is heat shrink, plastic wrap, and you've got something that's very important. And that is an insulating ring that sits up on top here and offers additional protection, helps prevent short circuiting the positive against the negative if its battery is rubbing up against something. So if you're ever rewrapping a battery, make sure to put this back in place. And just your basic can. And let's dive into it. What we have up on top is the top contact, but then underneath that, accessible through these slots, it's what's called the CID or the current interrupt device. And that is sort of a, a circuit breaker that trips if there's too much internal pressure is generated inside the device. Now the battery itself functions by, you can see this, metal tab here gets spot welded up to the bottom of this top contact structure and we can take a look at this quickly you can see here's your top contact structure this downward curve that is the venting disc that is what you can see if you look through the top contact and that is touching the CID, the current interrupt device that has the metal tab spot welded to it. And these are the slots that let the gas come up. Now there's an insulating washer here. So the current has to flow up through here, flow out here, and then out the top contact of the battery. It can't flow this way because of the insulating washer. And what happens is if lots of pressure is generated, comes up through these holes, this disc actually pops up and disconnects the current and stops current from flowing. The gas pressure inside here forces it to pop up. You may have seen videos where they say you can come in with a screwdriver and push this back down. Don't do that. It's incredibly dangerous, easy to short circuit the battery. And if this device is actuated, has popped up, it's done it for a reason. The battery has had something inside that's generated a lot of extra gas. It can be an internal short circuit, severe abuse, denting, crushing, something like that. Just replace the battery. And so this is the top part. There is the positive tab coming out of the circular roll and we'll go down to inside the rest of the battery. And I didn't just pull everything out of the can because I wanted to show you what goes on down in here. And that's the negative connection coming out of the spiral roll stuff, which we'll take a look at, spot welded to the inside of the can. And what's fascinating is, think about it. This is pressed in the bottom of the can. How do you spot weld that tab? They actually have to come with a rod down through the center of the cell and spot weld this blind without even seeing it, just done hopefully by machine, but some places do it by hand. And we will cut that off. If I can not try to cut the can and just cut the tab. Okay. So you've got the positive connection coming out of the roll and the negative connection coming out of the roll and unbelievably sharp pieces. And there's an insulator at the top, at the bottom, and another one at the top that helps keep the roll of stuff from touching the bottom inside of the can and short circuiting anything. Same with the top too. And then we have an insulator on the outside. And we start getting into the layers. And this is where the smell begins too. 
and it's quite toxic. <laughs> so there's an outside insulator, and now there's the copper sheet. And the copper sheet is the negative. And you've got the battery goop that's actually put onto the sheet. And the battery goop here is carbon in the form of graphite. And that's where the electrons are stored when the battery is charged. And that comes out the bottom for the negative end. That's the anode. And then the positive part, and you can see they coat both sides, be more efficient with stuffing everything in. Okay, I had a few issues with getting the layers sorted out here. We've got the outside insulating layer, and this is actually porous. This is called the separator, and this allows the electrolyte, the liquid, to move back and forth through the positive and negative layers, because it's also here. But it keeps these two sides from short circuiting. And you've got the black goop, the graphite goop on the copper coming off the negative contact. And then you've got, if I can rub some of this off. No, I can't. It just falls apart easily. Um, this is aluminum foil, which has a goop on it, which forms the positive part of the battery. And again, this porous separator in between here. And all throughout the cell is what they call the electrolyte. And that's the liquid that lets gives the ions something to flow back and forth through this negative. Namely, let's say, you know, comes, let's say we'll do, um, goes out the positive, goes back around, comes here to the foil, through the goop, through the separator, and then into the other group on the positive side. Now, the electrolyte is formed out of organic solvents. Think of, you know, paint thinners, uh, but very specialized ones, and a lithium salt that they, they dissolve in the electrolyte. And that gives you a head start on being conducted to the ions flowing back and forth between the positive layer here and the negative layer here. And it's all very toxic and very, very flammable. They have some additives in the electrolyte liquid, and it's not dripping it. It's just enough to saturate everything, uh, and it evaporates very quickly, which is why you don't see it now. And they add, have additives for flammability and for increase, increased performance. Now, they're trying to create, or they have them, but they're trying to improve the performance of the water-based electrolytes, which means it's not going to burn if the battery reaches thermal runaway or short-circuited or something like that. At least the electrolyte won't catch fire. Now, for the separator, this plastic, Sometimes they use two different plastics put together, one of them with a lower melting temperature than the other. And at a certain temperature, the one with the lower melting temperature will melt and that will partially block or completely block all the little tiny holes in the separator while still maintaining its structure because the higher melting temperature plastic will not melt, but the lower temperature plastic will. And that blocks the ion flow. And that's another way of turning off the current as a safety feature. And you've got the CID somewhere down here. Which will trip if excess gas is created. And here, the separator can be set up so that uh, closes off ion flow if the temperature is too high. Now, the battery goop itself, on the positive side, this is essentially what the chemistry is. Uh, like this one, uh, lithium ion, it's because of the goop here. Most of the batteries, lithium uh, batteries, have graphite or carbon powder of some type uh, at the negative end. But at the positive end, it's the metal oxide powders. For lipos, it's lithium and cobalt, lithium cobalt oxide. There's also nickel manganese cobalt. There's uh, lithium cobalt aluminum, nickel cobalt aluminum, lithium manganese oxide. But they're all essentially ox metal oxide powders. And both powders, the stuff on the negative foil and the stuff on the positive aluminum foil, are mixed with binders and with conductive additives. Binders are used to help make it stick to the foil, the aluminum foil, which is doing very well and the copper foil, which is not doing too well here, but when it's all rolled up, it certainly works much, much better. Now, for other types of batteries, typically they can uh, adjust, other types of lithium-ion batteries, they'll adjust the positive end 
what to do here for the chemistries, but they are working on things like graphene and stuff like that for the negative end to help improve performance, increase uh, the capacity, or maybe increase current handling a little bit better. And we'll go down through here, and you can see it says rolls and rolls. Now, the longer the roll, the higher the capacity because you got more of this battery group. And again, we're looking at the aluminum foil with the positive battery group on it. And then we get to the point where the tab, essentially you're taking a tap, this is clamped down, spot welded, or just crimped down onto the aluminum foil and comes up off. And this is how you, when all the ions flowing back and forth across here, you've got the copper layer inside here. Okay, there we go. So you've got the copper layer, this, and the aluminum layer. So the ions are flowing back and forth, but you've got to get it out of the battery. Out the negative end is in the center, but here's how they crimp on and then take the tap off. Now, if you have a really high current battery, they may have two of these tabs in two different places to help to reduce the resistance by taking the current off in two places. And then this is spot welded underneath here, and that forms the top of your battery. And we'll go down through a little bit more. Okay, now we can get to, you can see the aluminum foil. And the smell is remarkable. Then we get down to the end, and there's nothing except where the negative tap is taken. So in the copper foil, they crimp. I don't know if you can see the dots. That's where they crimp down onto the copper foil with a machine and take the tap off the bottom. And that gets spot welded to the inside bottom of the cell here. Now, some cells like the LG HD2, HG2 in the middle of the roll down at the end here, they have a hollow rod. And that hollow rod, if the cell goes in the thermal runaway and there's a, a fire, and it's expelling its contents out the top through the venting slots here around the top contact, that central hole can get clogged with debris. By having a hollow rod there, that can allow the gas to escape. That keeps all the gas coming out the venting slot as opposed to rupturing out the side, which would be uncontrolled. And in a battery pack, it's a big problem because that side jet of flame can ignite or set another cell next to it and essentially start a chain reaction through all the different cells that might be in a battery pack or uh, or any other type of device. But by having the central rod, hollow rod down the center, that helps keep the gases flowing out the top where they're supposed to. Now, something you may have noticed, I never pointed out any lithium metal. And that's because in these rechargeable lithium ion batteries, there is no lithium metal. Now, the batteries are hermetically sealed anyway. You saw what it took for me to get inside one. But let's say the battery was open somehow. Putting it in water doesn't cause any kind of lithium and water explosion. All the lithium is a metal oxide powder. There is no metallic lithium in a rechargeable lithium ion battery. What is fantastic and the preferred method for putting out a lithium ion rechargeable battery fire because it helps carry away the heat. And once you drop below the threshold temperature for thermal runaway, the reaction stops. Now, for the battery construction, the trade-offs, a lot of people say, hey, why can't we have a, a you know, 50 amp, 4,000 milliamp per hour, 18650? Well, the problem is, if you've got, if you want more capacity, you know, let's say you want to, you know, go above 3,550 milliamp per hour is the limit now for 18650. But let's say you want to go up to 38 milliamp, 3,800 milliamp per hour. Well, the problem is you need more of this goop for the positive and negative goop. So that's four layers of goop. We need to be able to either increase the thickness of, which means you need more room inside the battery, or we need a longer roll of the goop which means you need more room inside the battery. Now we can get some room by making the foil thinner, but if you make the foil thinner, now we have higher resistance. So we're gonna have a lower current handling. So you have to, almost always, have to give up 
something. If you want higher capacity, you need more room in the battery so you can have lower current handling because the foil will be thinner. Uh, if you want higher current handling, you need thicker foil. You need more tabs or uh, thicker metal tabs, maybe two of them coming out the top and the bottom, which means less room. If I have thicker foil, I have to have thinner layers of the goop, thinner layer of goop, lower capacity. So you might be able to bring you know, capacity and current handling up together to a certain point. But once you want to go, let's say, higher capacity, you've got to bring the current handling down. Same the other way, current uh, capacity and current handling can both come up. But at a certain point, if you want the current handling to go any higher, the capacity has to come back down. And it's because there just isn't enough room inside these batteries to do anything more. For performance, you can do a couple things like tweak the chemistry, use higher quality chemicals, higher purity, but that increases the price. Uh, there are higher performance chemicals like lipochemistry, give you higher performance, lower internal resistance, less voltage sag, but that results in more volatility, a much more violent reaction if it goes in the thermal runaway. Uh, also, better consistency in the manufacturer, uh, prevention of any contamination, you know, essentially quality control and quality of the manufacturer, that can help a little bit increasing capacity or current handling. But there's always going to be at a certain point a trade off and you just can't add anything more. And, and that's really the hallmark for it. it. You're designing for certain markets and you're balancing the trade offs for something like uh, power tools, electric vacuum cleaners. You can have higher current handling, less goop lower capacity, but thicker foils, uh, better handling of the heat, or the other thing, like uh, other side of the equation, maybe uh, power banks and stuff like that, electric vehicles, uh, energy storage, that's where you want capacity most of all. You can have very thin foil layers, lots of extra goop, longer rolls, higher capacity, but there are no miracle batteries that you can't get a 3,500 milliamp per hour, 50 amp, 18650. There's just going to be little improvements here or there. So buy from known, reliable suppliers. And don't believe this hype for 50, 60, 80, 100 amp batteries. They just don't exist because there are too many trade-offs. Now, I've shown you physically what's inside the batteries, but if you'd like to know more about what actually happens, what's going on with the ions, and how does the battery, actually, lithium-ion battery, actually function without getting too technical, Leave me a comment down below. If there are a lot of requests for it, I'll do a part two for this, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the actually function now that you know what's inside one of these batteries. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.